So we'll talk about tetanus next. Um, tetanus was first described very, very early on in the fifth century BC. It was, um, they really realized what caused tetanus when they reproduced it in an animal model in the 1880s. They had a case of a human who died and they injected some pus from this into animals and were able to cause the clinical symptoms of tetanus. Um, this is another toxin mediated disease. So the symptoms are due to an exoneurotoxin that's produced by the gram positive anaerobic spore forming bacteria that's shown in the bottom photo. The bacteria itself is very fragile, um, doesn't survive in oxygen, so it requires an anaerobic media, but the spores are very, very hardy and are even able to survive autoclaving. Um, and the neurotoxin is called titanospasmin, and per weight, it is one of the most toxic neurotoxins known to man. So you only need 2.5 nanograms per kilogram of body weight, and that would be a lethal dose of um, this neurotoxin. So very, very potent. The infection occurs when a wound is contaminated by bacteria that um, subsequently produces this exotoxin. Um, so contaminated wounds with deep punctured trauma or devitalized tissue are at greatest risk because these are uh, wounds that have the highest risk for developing necrosis and that very nice anaerobic environment that this bacteria prefers. Um, and there's usually no tissue destruction or inflammatory response. Um, you can, there's no person-to-person -person transmission for uh, tetanus. So this is one of the few diseases we're talking about where um, you cannot get it from another person. And the incubation time uh, ranges from three to 21 days and can be longer. And it really depends on the distance of the injury site to the central nervous system. So, um, you know, if you have an injury on your like little toe versus an injury on, you know, your upper arm or shoulder, then your incubation period will be different. And that's, it's kind of similar to the rabies, um, to rabies in this way. It just depends how far from the CNS it is because that's where, um, that's what is affected. So you can have three clinical forms that can overlap. The top picture shows generalized disease. So you can have trismus, which is where it's very hard to open the mouth, um, and then severe muscle spasms with dysautonomia. So you can have very labile blood pressures and arrhythmias from this. And that systemic disease is the most common type of disease. Um, you can have the neonatal form where the infants are sick because they don't get um, the passive immunity from the mother and they can, you can have localized disease where you just have local muscle spasms. Um, you can have such severe uh, sort of muscle spasms that people can have fractures from this. Um, and then because they're hospitalized for a long time, they can develop nosocomial infections. Um, and because we have such good, a good immunization system, there are fewer than 40 cases of this now reported a year, usually less than 30. Um, and most of the time, these are in people who are not vaccinated or who have let their um, immunity wane by not uh, getting their booster shots. And interestingly, heroin users are at increased risk. Um, because quinine is used to dilute the heroin, and the, I think the bacteria likes quinine. Got it. And what kind of prognosis is there for tetanus? So do we provide support and they recover fully? or? Um, you know, I'm, I'm not totally sure because I have never taken care of a patient uh, with significant tetanus, so it's something that I can look up and get back to you. I, mm -hmm. It is. Um, it is something that you, you know, you just, I think you provide supportive care um, mm -hmm. and try to support the patient through the illness. Yeah, I think that that is the yeah. part. Mm -hmm. Guys, thank you very much for watching this video. Make sure that you like and subscribe and if possible, share it with your friends as well.